Vastu Shastra is a traditional Hindu system of architecture, which literally translates to science of architecture. These are texts found on the Indian subcontinent that describe principles of design, layout, measurements, ground preparation, space arrangement and spatial geometry. Vastu Shastras incorporate traditional Hindu and in some cases Buddhist beliefs. The designs are intended to integrate architecture with nature, the relative functions of various parts of the structure, and ancient beliefs utilizing geometric patterns, symmetry and directional alignments. Vastu Shastra are the textual part of Vastu Vidya, the latter being the broader knowledge about architecture and design theories from ancient India. Vastu Vidya knowledge is a collection of ideas and concepts, with or without the support of layout diagrams, that are not rigid. Rather, these ideas and concepts are models for the organization of space and form within a building or collection of buildings. Based on their functions in relation to each other, their usage and to the overall fabric of the Vastu. Ancient Vastu Shastra principles include those for the design of Mandir, and the principles for the design and layout of houses, towns, cities, gardens, roads, waterworks, shops and other public areas. The use of Vastu Shastra in the modern era has been controversial. Some architects, particularly during India's colonial era, considered it arcane and superstitious. Other architects state that critics have not read the texts and that most of the text is about flexible design guidelines for space, sunlight, flow and function. Jaipur, the capital of the Indian state of Rajasthan and called the Ping City, was founded and built in early 1700s incorporating many of the layout principles for a city found in Vastu Shastris. Similarly, modern era projects such as the architect Charles Careers designed Gandhi Smarik Sangrahalaya in Ahmedabad, Vidhan Bhavan in Bhopal, and Jawahar Kala Kendra in Jaipur adapt and apply concepts from the Vastu Shastra Vidya. In the design of Chandigarh city, Le Corbusier incorporated modern architecture theories with those of Vastu Shastra. Terminology the Sanskrit word Vastu means a dwelling or house with a corresponding plot of land. The VRDDHI Vastu takes the meaning of the site or foundation of a house, site, ground, building or dwelling place, habitation, homestead, house. The underlying root is vast, to dwell, live, stay, reside. The term Shastra may loosely be translated as, doctrine, teaching. Vastu Sastras are ancient Sanskrit manuals of architecture. These contain Vastu Vidya, history. Historians such as James Ferguson, Alexander Cunningham and Dr. Havel have suggested that Vastu Shastra developed between 6000 BCE and 3000 BCE, adding that the archaeological sites of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro stand on the principles of Vastu Shastra. The Ping city Jaipur in Rajasthan was master-planned by Rajput King Jai Singh and built by 1727 CE, in part around Vastu Shilpa Sastra principles. Description there exist many Vastu Sastras on the art of building houses, temples, towns and cities. One such Vastu Sastra is by Thakura Faru, describing where and how temples should be built. By 6th century AD, Sanskrit manuals for constructing palatial temples were in circulation in India. Vastra Sastra manuals included chapters on home construction, town planning, and how efficient villages, towns and kingdoms integrated temples water bodies and gardens within them to achieve harmony with nature. While it is unclear, states Barnett, as to whether these temple and town planning texts were theoretical studies and if or when they were properly implemented in practice, the manuals suggest that town planning and Hindu temples were conceived as ideals of art an integral part of Hindu social and spiritual life. 
The Silpa Prakasa of Odisha, authored by Ramakandra Bhattarika Kaulakara sometime in 9th or 10th century CE, is another Vastu Sastra. Silpa Prakasa describes the geometric principles in every aspect of the temple and symbolism such as 16 emotions of human beings carved as 16 types of female figures. These styles were perfected in Hindu temples prevalent in eastern states of India. Other ancient texts found expand these architectural principles, suggesting that different parts of India developed, invented and added their own interpretations. For example, in Saurastra tradition of temple building found in western states of India, the feminine form, expressions and emotions are depicted in 32 types of Natakar Stri compared to 16 types described in Silpa Prakasa. Silpa Prakasa provides brief introduction to 12 types of Hindu temples. Other texts such as Pankaratra Prasada Prasadana compiled by Daniel Smith and Silpa Ratnakara compiled by Namada Sankara provide a more extensive list of Hindu temple types. Ancient Sanskrit manuals for temple construction discovered in Rajasthan, in northwestern region of India, include Sutradhara Mandana's Prasada Mandana with chapters on town building. Manasera Shilpa and Mayamata, texts of South Indian origin, estimated to be in circulation by 5th to 7th century AD, is a guidebook on South Indian Vastu design and construction. Izanaziva Gurdeva Padati is another Sanskrit text from the 9th century describing the art of building in India in South and Central India. In North India, Brihat Samhita by Varahamahira is the widely cited ancient Sanskrit manual from 6th century describing the design and construction of Nagara style of Hindu temples. These ancient Vastu Sastras often discuss and describe the principles of Hindu temple design but do not limit themselves to the design of a Hindu temple. They describe the temple as a holistic part of its community, and lay out various principles and a diversity of alternate designs for home, village and city layout along with the temple, gardens, water bodies and nature, mandala types and properties. The central area in all mandala is the Brahmasthana. Mandala, circle circumference, or completion, is a concentric diagram having spiritual and ritual significance in both Hinduism and Buddhism. The space occupied by it varies in different mandala. In Pitha and Upapitha it occupies one square module, in Maharapitha, Ugrapitha and Manduka, four square modules and in Stardila and Paramasaika, nine square modules. The Pitha is an amplified Prithvimanda in which, according to some texts, the central space is occupied by earth. The Stardila mandala is used in a concentric manner. The most important mandala is the Manduka, Chandita mandala of 64 squares and the Paramasaika mandala of 81 squares. The normal position of the Vastu Purusha is as depicted in the Paramasaika mandala. However, in the Manduka mandala the Vastu Purusha is depicted with the head facing east and the feet facing west. It is believed that every piece of a land or a building has a soul of its own and that soul is known as Vastu Purusha. A site of any shape can be divided using the Pada Vinyasa. Sites are known by the number of squares. They range from 1 by 1 to 32 by 32 square sites. Examples of mandalas with the corresponding names of sites include, Sakala corresponds to Ekapada, Pekaka corresponds to Dwi Pada, Pitha corresponds to Tripada, Maharapitha corresponds to Chatush Pada, Upapitha corresponds to Panchapada, Ugrapitha corresponds to Shastha Pada, Stadila corresponds to Saptapada, Manduka, Chandita corresponds to Ashtapada, Paramasaika, Paramasaika corresponds to Navapada, Asana corresponds to Dasapada, Modern Adaptations and Usage Vastra Sastra represents a body of ancient concepts and knowledge to many modern architects.
limits, a guideline but not a rigid code. The square grid mandala is viewed as a model of organization, not as a ground plan. The ancient Vastra Sastra texts describe functional relations and adaptable alternate layouts for various rooms or buildings and utilities but do not mandate a set compulsory architecture. Sakdev and Tillotson state that the mandala is a guideline, and employing the mandala concept of Astu Sastra does not mean every room or building has to be square. During the colonial rule period of India, town planning officials of the British Raj did not consider Vastu Vidya, but largely grafted Islamic Mughal era motifs and designs such as domes and arches onto Victorian era style buildings without overall relationship. Layout this movement, later known as the Indo Saracenic style, is found in chaotically laid out but externally grand structures in the form of currently used major railway stations, harbours, tax collection buildings, and other colonial offices in South Asia. Vastra Sastra Vidya was ignored, during colonial era construction, for several reasons. These texts were viewed by 19th and early 20th century architects as archaic. The literature was inaccessible being in an ancient language not spoken or read by the architects, and the ancient texts assumed space to be readily available. In contrast, public projects in the colonial era were forced into crowded spaces and local layout constraints, and the ancient Vastu Sastra were viewed with prejudices superstitious and rigid about a square grid or traditional materials of construction. Sakdev and Tillotson state that these prejudices were flawed, as a scholarly and complete reading of the Vastu Sastra literature amply suggests the architect is free to adapt the ideas to new materials of construction, local layout constraints and into a non-square space. The design and completion of a new city of Jaipur in early 1700s based on Vastra Sastra texts well before any colonial era public projects, was one of many proofs. Other examples include modern public projects designed by Charles Correa such as Jawahar Kala Kendra in Jaipur and Gandhi Ashram in Ahmedabad. Vastu Shastra remedies have also been applied by Kushti Bansal in 1997 to the Parliament Complex of India, when he contended that the library being built next to the building is responsible for political instability in the country. Klaus Peter Gast states that the principles of Vastu Shastras is witnessing a major revival and wide usage in the planning and design of individual homes, residential complexes, commercial and industrial campuses, and major public projects in India, along with the use of ancient iconography and mythological artwork incorporated into the Vastu Vidya architectures. Vastru and superstition The use of Vastu Shastra and Vastru consultants in modern home and public projects is controversial. Vastu Shastra is considered a pseudoscience by rationalists like Narendra Nayak of Federation of Indian Rationalist Associations. Scientist and astronomer Jayant Nalakar considers Vastu Shastra as pseudoscience and writes that Vastu does not have any logical connection to the environment. One of the examples cited by Nalakar arguing the absence of logical connection is the Vastu rule. Sites shaped like a triangle will lead to government harassment. Parallelogram can lead to quarrels in the family. Nala Khan notes that sometimes the building plans are changed and what has already been built is demolished to accommodate for Vastu rules. Regarding superstitious beliefs in Vastu, science writer Mir Ananda cites the case of N.T. Rama Rao, the ex-chief minister of Andhra Pradesh, who sought the help of Vastu consultants for his political problems. Rama Rao was advised that his problems would be solved if he entered his office from an east-facing gate. Accordingly, a slum on the east-facing side of his office was ordered to be demolished to make way for his car's entrance. The knowledge of Vastu consultants is questioned by Pramod Kumar. Ask the Vastu folks if they know civil engineering or architecture or the local government rules on construction or minimum standards of construction to advise people on buildings. 
they will get into a barrage of ancient texts and science that smack of the pseudoscience of astrology. Ask them where they were before the construction boom and if they will go to slum tenements to advise people or advise on low-cost community housing. You draw a blank. Vastu Shastras, Sanskrit treatises on architecture. Of the numerous Sanskrit treatises mentioned in ancient Indian literature, some have been translated in English. Many Agamas, Puranas and Hindu scriptures include chapters on architecture of temples, homes, villages, towns, fortifications, streets, shop layout, public wells, public bathing, public halls, gardens, river fronts among other things. In some cases, the manuscripts are partially lost, some are available only in Tibetan, Nepalese or South Indian languages while in others original Sanskrit manuscripts are available in different parts of India. Some treatises or books with chapters on Vastu Shastra include Manasara, Brait Samhita, Mayamata, Anka Sastra, Aparahita Vastu Sastra, Maharagamas, Ayadalakshana, Aramadi Pratish the Padati, Kasyapiya, Kupadi Jalastana Lakshana, Kshetra Nirmana Vidhi, Gagya Samhita, Griha Pithika, Gatozaga Sukhanaka, Chakra Sastra, Jnana Ratna Kosha, Vastu Sarana, Devilaya Lakshana, Dravedi Shodazagahani, Navasastra, Agni Purana, Matsya Purana, Maya Samgraha, Prasadika Tana, Prasada Lakshana, Takju Sastra, Minushilaya Lakshana, Mantra Dapika, Mana Kathna, Manava Vasta Lakshana, Mana Solasar, Raja Griha Niamana, Rupa Mandana, Vastu Chakra, Vastu Tattva, Vastu Ninaya, Vastu Purusha Lakshana, Vastu Prakasa, Vastu Pradapa, Vastu Manjari, Vastu Mandana, Vastu Lakshana, Vastu Vichara, Vastu Vidya, Vastu Vidhi, Vastu Samgraha, Vastu Sarvasva, Vimana Lakshana, Visvakarma Prakasa, Vaikanazar, Sastra Jaladi Ratna, Sipla Prakasa, Silpa Kala Dapika, Silpatha Sastra, Sanakkamara Vastu Sastra.